Uh, okay, thanks a lot for including this paper on the program. Uh, so uh, this is a colossal wor work with uh, Costas Antonio from University of Warwick, uh, Sherwin Liu from uh, HKUST, and uh, Subra from UCLA, and uh, Chen Zhu, who is a PhD student at uh, HKUST. So we have five authors on this paper because it's a merge of two independent uh, paper by the two independent teams. So um, ETF now is a very big thing in uh, US and also internationally. So according to Invest Company Institute, they are around 2,000 ETFs at end of 2018, uh, managing uh, 3.4 trillion US dollar. And globally, there are more than 5,000 ETF, managing 4.7 trillion US dollar. And uh, around 10% of market cap now is held by ETF. But even more strikingly is that invest do not just hold ETF by the hold approach. They actually trade ETF very actively. So although ETF uh, have 10% of market cap, but they uh, can constitute more than 30% of trading volume and also uh, more than 20% of short interest. So there's a recent survey paper by Ben David et al. shows that um, the rise of ETF in the recent decades. So this figure shows you the, uh, the market cap of ETF as a fraction of total market cap. You can see that uh, the data a bit up, uh, outdated. So uh, at end 2016, it's already 10%. And uh, if you consider recent uh, three-year growth, the amount of the market cap that hold by ETF is an even larger. And what's more striking is that um, the intensity of trading activity for ETF is even higher than their market cap suggests. So the uh, average trading volume for ETF, dollar value trading volume, is more than 30% in the recent years. And uh, during the peak of financial crisis, it can easily go up to more than 40 and 45%. So this suggests investors are not just uh, passively buy and hold ETF. They actually actively trade on ETF. Potentially, so there are some could be some noise trading, but some part of the trading could be bad on systematic information because ETF is a basic security for to trade on macro and industry view. Uh, so the recent rapid growth of ETF, although it benefits uh, small investors to for them to easily access previous unaccessible financial market, but also raise a lot of concerns for the financial stability. So uh, some academic studies suggest that ETF actually can destabilize financial market by increasing uh, idiosyncratic volatility. And my discussant, uh, Sophie, have a very nice paper with Zhida, shows that the, because ETF, you have to trade the basic security together. So uh, they tend to increase the, the non-fundamental access correlation among the individual securities within the ETF. And the same recent study began to examine whether ETF actually uh, uh, facilitated or hindered the informational efficiency. So on the one, so there are currently uh, uh, two, uh, two mixed uh, empirical results. On the one hand, because the investor now, uh, uninformed investor, if you let them choose which market they want to participate in, normally they will choose the basic security because information asymmetry at the firm level is the most severe for individual trading on individual names rather than trading basic security. So we do see a more migration of the individual retail investor starting to migrate from individual stocks to the ETF market. So that actually depletes the uh, liquidity of the underlying security and it makes the price impact trading individual names larger. And extent if you consider the informed traders incentive, they are less profitable to be made because of high price impact. So there will be less uh, information acquisition at a firm level for the underlying security when it's held by more ETF. But on the other hand, the ETF is a very nice security or e vehicle for you to trade on macro or industry or even fact information. So there are now uh, uh, more than uh, 2,000 ETF, and it's not just the ETF on broad market index. There are ETF on almost every sector, and many of the smart beta ETF we see they do trade on fact information like value, growth, momentum, idiosyncratic volatility. So potentially ETF is a very nice instrument for you invest to bet on systematic uh, view. So um, however, although ETF has this uh, contradictory or um, mixed uh, empirical uh, effect on the information efficiency, but we still need to know what's net effect on ETF on informational efficiency. And this question is difficult to answer from investor point of view, because from outside the investor point of view, you need both type of information. Uh, so both type of information are valuable to you. However, uh, if you look at this question from the manager's point of view, then things start to change. Uh, so in this paper, we start to investigate how ETF affects the real efficiency from manager's point of view. And uh, uh, as Itai already uh, uh, talked a lot in the keynote speech, 
this question is important because uh, the what really matter for price efficiency is that not it's not just the extent of how price is able to forecast future cash flow, which man manager may already know. It's more important uh, the price efficiency measures how uh, actually the price provide a signal that uh, incremental to manager's private information and uh, contribute to more efficient investment allocation. So from an alloca allocative point of view, investment efficiency, uh, the reveal to the price efficiency is probably more important than the forecasting price efficiency. Um, and also, uh, we do see that market participants also increase worrying about not just the, price, the forecasting efficiency, but also the real efficiency of ETL price. So there is a very bold uh, research report issued by Stanford Bernstein. It's a very famous US brochure firm uh, with a very um, bold title, which is uh, why passive investing is worse than Marxism. So they basically argue that in a passive in a world which is fully managed by passive fund, there will be no fundamental firm level price discovery. So firm cannot, uh, managers cannot efficiently allocate uh, resource to a profitable investment opportunity. Uh, that is well act actually worse than a centrally planned economy where at least the government can do an allocation role. So that's a uh, uh, concern from the market participants, which is a uh, regard to not the forecasting efficiency, but the regulatory price efficiency of asset price. And uh, we argue uh, that and uh, find evidence that actually it's contradictory to those uh, uh, simple intuition by the uh, market participants. So we argue that ETF should actually improve the price efficiency uh, through the managerial lending channel. So the reason is because um, um, first, the ETF should uh, theoretically lead to a more uh, price, more investor trade on fact information or systematic information. Uh, so as uh, early old paper by Subra in 1991, at that time he was talking about uh, index futures, uh, which are biggest thing at that time, and argued that how the initiation of basic security can change the number of informed investors who trade on factor level information versus trading on firm level information. And the recently a theoretical paper by Tong and Xu also argues that uh, if you initiate a basic security, then more investors will tend to acquire firm, uh, factor level and the systematic information and less acquisition on firm level information. And uh, because the ETF arbitrage mechanism, if ETF uh, price incorporate more systematic information, that will ultimately lead to an increase of systematic information in underlying stock price. The reason because arbitrage will actively um, uh, trade uh, uh, against the price deviation between underlying stock price and ETF. So whenever there is a price di di uh, difference between the ETF price underlying and if the price deviation is large enough than the trading cost, then the arbitrary mechanism will try to uh, make the spread smaller. And in this way, the whatever information incorporated into ETL price will eventually be incorporated into stock price. So as a result, stock price will also incorporate more systematic information. And uh, uh, we argue that uh, uh, managerial learning, if they want to learn from stock price, is incrementally more likely they are learning the systematic information rather than firm level information because managers are considered already the most informed guy about their own firm. But uh, if they want to learn useful signal from stock price, it's more likely that they learn information about the industry demand or the macroeconomy. So that's why, uh, uh, from the manager's point of view, ETF actually expand the manager's information set, although it's not necessarily spent outside investors. So that's a key insight of our paper. So uh, from investor point of view, ETF reduce firm level information but increases systematic information, and it's not clear that. Um, whether investors actually benefit or uh, hurt by this uh, rising of ETF. However, from manager's point of view, ETF uh, actually improve I their information set because managers do not care so much about reduction of firm level information because they already consider quite informed guy about their own firm's fundamental. And they do benefit from the ETF, uh, benefit from the increased systematic information containing stock price because it's held by more ETF. And we actually have a test on this assumption using the insider trading. So if you consider this, uh, this information wedge between uh, investor and the manager with respect to firm level information, so what uh, the consequence of ETF is that it actually increases the information asymmetry between investor and the manager about the firm level information. As a result, uh, you would expect uh, that insider trading profitability increase, and that's exactly what we find. So ETF can increase uh, uh, policy effect on the profitability of inside trading, which suggests that the reduction of firm level information 
it not so uh, uh, done too much harm to the managers, but it do reduce the information for investors. So what we find uh, is that we use the investment Q sensitivity as a measure of major learning from the literature, and we follow a standard uh, uh, empirical setup, and we find that the one interquartile increase in ETF ownership would increase investment Q sensitivity by 7%. And uh, uh, of course, ETF uh, ownership could be uh, correlated with other unobserved firm characteristics. And uh, some can even argue that initiation of ETF is, is uh, endogenous to the, uh, how efficient the firm investment is uh, to the investor opportunity. So we use two uh, independent settings to uh, identify the causal variation, so, so exogenous variation of ETF ownership. So one identification strategy we use is a standard, this uh, now a very well-known Russell's index risk constitution. Uh, and the second uh, instrument that we use is uh, BlackRock's purchase of iShare unit from Barclay Global Investor. Uh, so the reason we use that, uh, also add the uh, identification using a second instrument is that because the ETF, the rise of ETF is a more recent thing. And the second identification actually happens in a more recent time. Uh, and uh, uh, while the Russell index, because they changed the bending rule in 2007, so we can only use the time period before 2007. So, uh, uh, but nonetheless, across the two in independent uh, settings, we find that the uh, exogenous part of the ETF ownership also increased investment Q sensitivity. And we then test the additional implication that uh, suggests by the managerial learning channel. So first, we argue that um, there is a very unique prediction predicted by the learning channel uh, rather than alternative explanation. So, because we argue that ETF help incorporate more systematic information into own firm stock price, so managers uh, start to learn more from stock price. However, manager can also use a peer stock price to learn industry level information. So, Olivia has a, a recent paper show that uh, the peers, the noise containing the peer uh, price can affect investment, which uh, indirectly suggests that managers are trying to learn systematic information from peer stock price. So, if you can see this substitution between uh, own firm stock price and the peer stock price. If the own firm stock price contain more systematic information, then the peer stock price will be less useful to managers. So the manager learning trend actually predicts that ETF will reduce investment sensitivity to peer stock price. So uh, as I, I will argue later on, this is a unique uh, prediction by the manager learning channel is difficult to explain by alternative channels. Uh, so all the other alternative channels that we conjecture the uh, actually predict the uh, same direction of the ETF ownership on investment queue sensitivity and also investment sensitivity on peer stopping skill. And the second, we find that uh, the increased investment queue sensitivity indeed improve investment efficiency and the uh, real outcome as measured by exposed uh, operating performance of the firm, including uh, earnings, uh, sorry, profitability, and also uh, sales growth rate. And we also find that effect is cross-sectionally is stronger among firms where the learning incentive for systematic information is much stronger. So empirically, we measure the importance of systematic information using market beta, and we find the effect is stronger among high beta firms where systematic information is more important uh, for manager. And also, uh, the effect is stronger among industry where the systematic variation of the productivity shock is more uncertain. So managers have a particularly strong incentive to learn the systematic component of information. And we also argue that managers do not uh, necessarily have all the uh, firm level private information. Uh, so some for some firms, they have managers have more precise firm level information. So in for those firms, the increased systematic information will be more important uh, to them and uh, they will not care too much about reduction of firm level information. So empirically, we measure how precise the manager have information about their own firm using insider trading profitability. And we find that when insider trading is more profitable, suggesting that the manager is more informed about the firm's own fundamental, managers have strong incentive to learn the systematic information from stock price, and they do not care too much about reduction of firm level information because they already uh, have relatively precise firm level information. Um, uh, so the natural question for our study is that uh, since ETF, since ETF price or also contains systematic information, which is uh, transmitted back into individual underlying stock price, why the manager do not directly learn systematic information from ETF price? Instead, they want to learn from own stock price. So there are a couple of explanations, um, and uh, we argue that empirically uh, nowadays uh, stock is held by on average more than 20 ETF, 
and the maximum number of ETF holding a stock could be more than 100. So it's very difficult to aggregate all the systematic information from dozens of ETF that are relevant to this firm. And also an ETF could contain uh, systematic information that are not so relevant to this firm. And the manager need to disentangle which part of the systematic information is more important uh, to the individual firm from ETF price. But uh, given arbitrage doing a good job, then the all the relevant systematic information can already be learned from individual stock price rather than from ETF price, which is more costly if a manager have some capacity constraint in disentangling which type of ETF is more relevant and what kind of information we should learn. So our data is uh, very standard. Uh, so the ETF, um, we require the ETF to be holding underlying stocks in the US domestic market. So uh, this part we pass from the name by, uh, by excluding those ETFs that holding, even if they trade on US stock exchange, they can hold international equity and they can hold uh, uh, non-equity assets. And we pass the fund name to exclude all those uh, non-US equity, domestic equity ETF. So we focus on the uh, domestic US equity ETF. And we also require ETF have holdings information available from the Thomson Reuters mutual fund data set. And our final sample have uh, 605 ETF from 2003 to 2016, uh, which is very similar to the, uh, the literature. And the ETF ownership uh, uh, measure is also very straightforward. It's the number of shares held by ETF divided by total number of shares outstanding. Uh, and the investment that we use both, uh, so we follow uh, ETI seminar work on the investment kill entity with uh, Chen Qi and uh, Wei Jiang. We use uh, both capital expenditure and R&D expense and also look at two components separately. And in our robotics track, we'll also look at the percentage change of total asset and the uh, uh, expense on merger acquisition. And we all find the similar results, no matter which uh, investment measure we use. So uh, our underlying hypothesis and the uh, uh, underlying premise of our hypothesis is that stock price, because of uh, the mechanism that we I just described, uh, ETF will incorporate more systematic information, which ultimately translates back into individual uh, security. So the stock price should uh, become more informative about the future systematic information and potentially can decrease the firm level information in stock price. So how do we test this uh, uh, hypothesis, underlying premise? So we use a uh, accounting literature with standard earnings failure to earnings response coefficient to examine whether the how how good is the current uh, stock return to forecast future earnings. And we further decompose earnings into a systematic component and the idiosyncratic component. So here is the results. So overall, we find that uh, ETF has a positive effect on the ability of the current uh, stock return to predict the future earnings. However, effect is purely due to the ability of the current stock return to predict the systematic component of earnings. And if we look at the firm level component of earnings, ETF actually has a detrimental effect. So this is consistent with the two prior study and also the theoretical literature showing that ETF facilitated more systematic information into stock price, but may decrease the firm level information in the stock price. So now the question is that for managers, which type of information, which the composition of information is more important to them? So there are some recent studies suggest it's not the total level information that matters really to manager. It's the composition, the source of information uh, in the stock price that really matters to investment kill sensitivity. So our uh, approach also uh, is uh, similar to along this line of literature. So this is a standard investment kill regression. So the dependent variable is an uh, investment measure and uh, 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 we control for the uh, so uh, the key independent variable is Tobin's Q and its intention with ETF ownership. And we also control for uh, a bunch of uh, control variable and their intention with Tobin's Q. And also we control for firm and the year fixed effect. So as you can see, um, uh, ETF has a positive effect on investment Q sensitivity. And the effect uh, uh, is a persistent, uh, is a pervasive, whether you measure it using CAPEX or R&D. And we have robotic test show that it also works for um, uh, expense on merger acquisition and uh, total change of assets. Um, so we, as I uh, already uh, uh, pre-reviewed that we use two uh, uh, settings to identify exogenous variation of ETF ownership. The first one is the uh, uh, Russell Index Reconstitution. So we follow the methodology by Appel, Gormley, and King by instrumenting ETF ownership using an inclusion dummy into Russell 2000. Uh, but our key independent variable is actually intention term. So you have to instrument the 
whole term together rather than uh, instrument the ETF separate and uh, intact with ETF uh, queue. That's a uh, forbidden regression. So we do uh, intact. Uh, we do instrument for this. Our key value interest using inclusion dummy in intact with topping skew, and uh, this is the uh, regression results. So in the first stage, we do see that inclusion into Russell 2000 is a strong indicator, a strong uh, instrument for ETF ownership. So if compared to uh, stocks that around the Russell 1000 cutoff, uh, we use our bandwidth of from range from uh, 150 to 300, and find similar results. ETF ownership increased by around 20 percent, and then uh, uh, this uh, inclusion into two thousand dummy with the uh, topping skill also instrument for strong instrument for Q intact with ETF ownership, and then we uh, look at the second stage regression and find that instrument ETF ownership uh, also have a, a positive effect on investment Q sensitivity, and uh, our second uh, identification strategy is uh, Black Rocks purchase of a. Uh, uh, I share ETF unit from Barclays. So clearly, the that acquisition not motivated by ETF at all. It's due to the mortgage se back security issue in the Barclay global Barclay bank, and they want to avoid a bailout by UK government. So they sold out their most profitable business to the BlackRock. So clearly, this acquisition has nothing to do with underlying stocks because it's driven by the uh, another segment of the uh, Barclays. And we find we argue that uh, if a stock is owned by high I share ETF before the acquisition, that should those stocks should increase uh, experience an increase of ETF ownership relative to stocks held by less I share ETF ownership. Because BlackRock, we know it has a strong brand name and a better distribution channel. So the AUM under managed by uh, I share ETF increase more than other uh, other brand name. So that's our second identification strategy. So we use a um, post acquisition dummy intact with a treatment uh, group treatment dummy to identify to uh, as a shock as an instrument for ETF ownership. And the treatment dummy is a, a dummy that flags whether a company is in, in the top 30 percent of stocks uh, owned by uh, I share ownership. And we use different cutoff and find similar results. So because time constraint, I do not have uh, in, uh, enough time to show you all the results. So I just want to show you uh, another, the last result is that we find that ETF ownership actually peer stock price, which suggests that there is indeed uh, the major lending channel playing in, in a role because uh, other alternative to planning like uh, better corporate governance or relaxed financial constraint would all predict that ETF uh, ownership will have the same effect on the investment queue sensitivity and the investment peer queue sensitivity. So that's our, uh, so it doesn't rule out alternative, but that ruin our, uh, our explanations. So uh, I will just uh, quickly conclude. So part of that uh, conclusion motivated by uh, Drew's uh, keynote speech last day, uh, yesterday, he argues that uh, passing investor actually uh, may free ride on the information acquisition uh, by active manager. So there is a role for active investing to play in. But I argue that although ETF, especially for ETF, although it's a passive instrument, but the way investors trade it is very active. Otherwise, we wouldn't see such, such high trading volume. As a result, the rise of passive investment do not necessarily and may actually improve uh, the price efficiency. So that's all my presentation. Thank you very much.